Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to have you here with us in wonderful Venice. Thank Maybe you. you could begin with a brief introduction to your film, Hesitation Wound. What can audiences expect when they watch it? Uh, Hesitation Wound is a film uh, that takes place in uh, 24 hours and uh, shapes around the hearing. And uh, we basically uh, follow a criminal lawyer, Janan. Who, is, uh, who has to make some moral decisions about her profession and personal life. And um, what was the spark of the idea? Um, obviously you had great success with Between Two Dawns. How do you feel like maybe, um, you know, why did you want to tell this story next? Does it share any DNA with that first film um, or is it something completely different for you? Uh, the good thing for me was Between Two Downs was going to premiere in 2020, but because of pandemic, we pushed one more year. And at that time, without thinking anything, without even sharing Between Two Downs, I started to write this film. And so that's why I never got uh, affected by any comment or anything from Between Two Downs, because when the f Between Two Downs was out, I was like, uh, already shooting his station wound. So in that sense, uh, I, I really feel, feel the freedom, which I don't know how it would affect me if, you know, I would shoot it after be releasing the Between Two Downs. But um, when I'm like making films, uh, I make many decisions intuitively. Uh, of course, I study law in college, so that's why I was always interested in this kind of topics like crime, justice, morality. But um, I'm also really interested in the characters, and I like to tell the story from character point of view. And the characters who are in stuck in between things, the feeling of being in stuck is like really important for me. And in this case, Janan is, you know, in stuck in between her professional and personal life. She being living in the big city, then uh, she has to come back to a small city. Uh, she's a strong person, but, you know, surrounded by many men in a male-centric world. So she's like, you know, really uh, this feeling um, was really exciting for me. Uh, at the same time, locations are really important for me and I wanted to make a film that takes place in only in public locations. Mm -hmm. There is no any private location in this film. It's either courthouse, hospital, post office, jail or streets, but there is no private place. There is only one place that we could call maybe private, which is John Lund Cars, which doesn't belong to her. So like she is either in public place or she is somewhere that she doesn't belong to her. So like this, uh, this feeling of not being in private place, um, you know, that's maybe I wrote this in pandemic time when we were in, stuck in our apartments, maybe that helped too. But you know, I kind, I kind of follow this feeling. And of course, I o always love to understand how the system is working or not working. So I love to look at the big picture while talking, like going through the character's perspective. So I love to do the connection between the character and the system. That's why, um, you know, uh, I think having a uh, location like Cortas in the center of the film allow me to discuss many issues directly uh, some questions directly. Uh, allow, it allow me to discover many things. So that's why I kind of like decided to make this film mm. and started the pro process maybe two and a half years ago, three years ago. And what about the, the concept of having it over these 24 hours? Mm -hmm. And what's incredible is there's so much packed in to that time so even though you know we have moments almost playing out in real time particularly in the court um you know we're watching it moment to moment um so much is able to be packed in but you also have that feeling of intensity and the pressure that is weighing on on the shoulders of this character and she seems to almost be you know breaking from from the inside and then the room around her itself is also breaking um 
So what was the idea behind that 24 hours and I guess creating that tension, almost, yeah. like, almost like a thriller? I think the questions that we are talking about, the issues we are talking about, if we uh, talk about them when we have time, our answers are not honest. Because like, if we are talking about something that is not related to you, or if we are talking about something that you don't need to answer now, you have time to think about it, then you can talk about them ideally, realistically, N not realistically, but um, analytically. Uh, you can just like, you know, analyze them. You can tell ideal answers. But if you are under a time pressure and there are other kind of pressures, uh, you know, you're in between uh, other pressure, other problems, and you have to answer now, and it's related to you or someone you care, then, you know, something from your soul, like you, you, you have to react uh, really personally, you know. I think in order to, I love to understand the deep uh, side of the human being, you know, their soul, and in order to understand that you have to give this kind of pressure to f to see what is intuitively coming from the people. So that was the uh, main reason for me. Almost this kind of um, nexus between being at breaking point, but also on the verge of a breakthrough. Almost, exactly. You know, the, the, the pressure that's applied maybe can help you transform or, or think, seeing things in a different way. Definitely. And. An amazing cast across the board, but right at the centre, Tillin Ozen. I mean, she's absolutely formidable um, as your central character. And as we were saying, you know, there's so, such nuance. I mean, she's, there's so much strength and, you know, like you say, a woman in, in a sea of men um, who, who seem to, you know, be condescending or, you know, she has to fight for every moment that she, she has her presence or she has the, that platform. Um, how did you choose her and how did you work with her to, you know, elicit this incredible performance? Thank you. Of course, um, I was doing auditions and I did audition for many people. I saw so many people before seeing, seeing Tulin. And when I saw Tulin, um, not only she's a great person, great actor, but also she understands the character so well and I saw something in it that we could collaborate together while creating this character. And we did because we almost worked one year before the film. And we uh, talk a lot about the character. We go to courthouses. We watch many real cases. We observe like real lawyers, real judges. Uh, and what is the atmosphere and life in courthouse. But at the same time, even though we focus only, you know, just two days in her life, we know the every detail of her life, you know, what happened before, what she will think, what she will do probably later. So like when Tulin was on set, we already, she already was Janan, you know. So uh, she was already in the character. So we on set, we were able to just like, you know, tune things or uh, we could work on the nuances. So I think um, for, you know, we, 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 work, we work really hard, uh, not only also intellectually, but also we did like so many rehearsal. And also since the scenes are not short and it's long take. Uh, it was important to be prepared before. So um, basically, um, you know, we we work on the character, maybe on every scene, maybe even on every line, like, you know, uh, and she knew as much as I knew it. So that's why I was so happy to work with her because, um, and also, there's a nuance in the film that she's a lawyer and we see her 
you know, behavior in the courthouse, but at the same time we see a, he, her as a sister or as a daughter in a hospital, and also she has a different approach when she is on street with other people. So like, even though she just like she was Janan, one character, but there were nuances according to where she was, and that's why it was, I think it was not easy also, there is a law process. Um, uh, there are some, you know, um, rules. So that's why uh, it was important to be able to do that, to be able to fight, to be able to, you know, you know, understand your sister. So she's going through many things, and I think she embraces it very well. Did you have a scene that was particularly challenging to pull off or a highlight on set? I mean, like you say, the long takes, I was thinking even when she's standing up in court and you know, it gets rudely interrupted by the ceiling falling in, but she's, you know, that impassioned speech. It's, it's a lot to, you know, deliver in one go. Um, so perhaps some of those scenes were the most difficult, I don't know. Uh, yes, uh, there were like many difficult scenes, uh, and especially in the scene when you know, I don't want to give spoiler, but like, you know, she has like maybe three or four minutes close up monologue, like long speech, and then something happens, and then camera doesn't cut, but follow that. And, you know, uh, it was not easy, you know, giving that performance, at the same time, you know, organizing this and connecting everything in the one shot, but, uh, I was gonna. I was gonna tell you that this was the most difficult thing that was gonna happen. I thought, and this was the easiest thing we got. Surprisingly, I think uh, the moment that she cried, I thought it was so easy to shoot, but it was really difficult mm -hmm. because you know um, uh, to make it real. Uh, you need, like, you need to find something on uh, on set, and you you are you don't always like you know uh, what you prepare is working on set. So um, if you can find quickly on set, then it's easy. But sometimes you don't. You don't, that day uh, for a long time, I we didn't know what to do, and eventually we found how we could you know work on it. Mm. And in terms of what people can take away from watching a film, I mean, as you sort of said at the beginning, you're using kind of your setting and your character to explore issues of corruption, you know, of a sort of uh, a justice system that potentially doesn't work as well as you'd like, um, and, and balancing, you know, your own sense of morality versus the justice system that we're all supposed to work within. Um, but then there's some also underneath all of that something very human and, and you really connect to this character and you're there with her every moment um, what do you hope people take away from watching it i mean this is a film that we focus on janan's process a process that she's making some decisions and i was like not so much interested in uh the result of this but like the, the process how difficult it is to make this kind of uh, you know, decisions, and I really, really wanted audience to, um, you know, ask some questions, similar questions to themselves. What, what uh, I would do if I would be there. So uh, that's why I think um, one of the most important thing for me was if the uh, film is making audience to, you know, question themselves as John Nan did in the film. Mm -hmm. I think this is the most important thing because uh, when you question things, you try to empathize, you try to understand, even if you cannot find the solution, but you try to discover something in your soul. Uh, so that's, uh, maybe you start to discover your dark side, maybe, you know, um, I got some audience reaction, for example, that I see that they were so honest with themselves and then they were like, you know, while thinking about this film, I discover something which, which is uh, not necessarily a great thing, but like this is something that I discovered. So like the first step is just to question and 
try to understand. And I think I would like this film to, you know, just uh, punch audience and make them questions. So as Janan, you know, did in the film. And finally, what does it mean to you to have a film here as part of the Venice Film Festival? It's, uh, it's really great, you know, it's a great festival being with the cast and crew. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing, but at the same time, uh, personally, uh, it means a lot to me too, because I, I visited Venice 12 years ago when I was a student. Uh, I was studying law and I decided to, I wanted to make films, but I didn't have courage to say to this anyone yet, even to myself, but that was the idea in my mind. And um, I was doing like interrail uh, and our train um, got delayed while coming to Venice. And instead of 6 p.m., I was here at 2 p.m., 2 a.m. and I didn't have much money and I didn't want to like pay to a hostel for just few hours and um, basically uh, I just slept on a bench you know uh, in Venice and uh, at I think around 6 a.m. I woke up until the evening I visit around then I left the city uh, and coming back and I visit that bench that I stay uh, that was really touching because at that time I didn't know what I was what I wanted to do I didn't have money um, but uh, coming back to Venice with the film uh, and sharing the moment with people I appreciate uh, I collaborate so that was really personally also touching for me mm. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for thank sharing you. all that with me and really enjoy the rest of the time here in Venice. Thanks thank you so much.